what's poppin' Jin Bob here, tonight's today with Redacted Life, a silly little visual novel. Apparently this is sort of a story that's both comedic and scary, which is a little bit odd to me because I've never known something to be both funny and scary at the same time. Generally if something's funny, you don't find it scary at all. Who knows? Let's go ahead and get into Redacted Life though and see what it's all about. I first realized I was a character in a video game about three weeks ago. At first, I noticed little things, glitches, things blinking in and out of existence. And you know like that glitch when you walk against the wall and you keep walking like you're in a walking animation but you don't go anywhere? Then I tried to remember things like how I met my girlfriend Rebecca, where I was born, or either of my parents' names. I couldn't remember. I could only remember as far back as a month ago. It was a hard three weeks. The worst part was that when I tried to explain this all to Rebecca, it was like, it was like she wouldn't listen to me. Like she couldn't hear me. I guess the game's programming could only stretch so far. Eventually, I decided to just let things happen and see how things would unfold. I mean, after all, despite how existential crisis-inducing finding out your life's a game was, my life was a pretty good life. I would just imagine there's someone peering over my shoulder, playing me as a video game character in a game called Life. And they're just like, make fun of your YouTube videos, YouTube videos, YouTube... Well, whoever's controlling me, just letting you know, you're not doing a great job. Get better at this game. Anyways... Might as well enjoy it, right? Then we, well, Rebecca decided we should move out. Before finding an affordable home to rent, it was too large a place to own all by ourselves. We packed our things from our city apartment and drove to the countryside. We're here. We stepped out of a car. Oh my god, she's got the jacket! Only it's in red. And also, holy crap, she's a plethora of colors. Red, blue, green. I dated a girl with not very much fashion sense. There it is, Adrian. The house is over there at the end of the road. I looked at the mansion in the distance. Come on, Sheshka. Open the back door of the car and let Sheshka- Oh, doggo! However, as soon as she got out of the car, Sheshka started growling. Well, that's a bad sign. And Rebecca turned to Sheshka. Oh, what's the matter, girl? She's scared of that house. We bought the wrong fucking place, man. We, we were terrible at looking at real estate. I don't know. Because it looked like the mansion's architect was a fan of Edward Gorey. I don't know who that is. Edward Gorey. American writer and artist noted for his illustrated books. His pen and ink drawings often depict vaguely unsettling narrative scenes in Victorian Edwardian settings. There you go. Now you get that reference. And so do I. We're so uncultured. <laughs> oh, yeah. Let's go into the big creepy house. Oh, God. There's cobwebs. I looked around. I could see from here that there was a study room that led to a massive grand ballroom. There's a kind of grand ballroom that I imagine also doubling as a final boss here. Oh. Uh-oh. Is that foreshadowing? Very unusual furniture. I started a weird painting what I interpreted as two horses. The frame it was in looked like four sets of claws trying to rip the artwork open. Very unusual. I prefer to call it Rustic Charm. I love how old-timey this place looks. What? Scared? No. Well, I just don't think someone's gonna jump out and shout a boogie woogie boo, but I still feel a huge amount of unease. Don't worry, I'm protected from anything in this house. Oh, she's glitching out. She's glitching out. Okay, okay. It happened from time to time. It was the first thing that made me realize I was in a game. It used to freak me out, but now the novelty's worn off. Or the shock's worn off, whatever you want to call it. It seemed like me acting out of character causes this. It's like Rebecca can't figure out how to react to me. Alright, so if I do anything that's uncharacteristic, she starts glitching out. Oh, yeah. I said I'll protect you. Uh-huh. Yeah, okay. If we're moving into this house, why are we acting like we never set foot in this house before? Apparently, this is a world where you pay an estate agent a lot of money and just hope for the best. Yeah, normally you sort of, like, look at the house you're buying before you buy it, right? We're leaving this crazy house. A young couple came lumbering down the stairs. They're each carrying a suitcase. I've had it! I can stand for a lot of things, but not this! And with that, the couple left. My, my. A person, whose gender was unclear to me, approached us. It seems another family has left us, with another to replace them. It's like a revolving door around here. Hello, my name's Terrell. How are you? The voice was also ambiguous, not just in terms of gender. It sounded young and ancient, childish and wise, all at the same time. I don't know if I can pull a voice like that off. I'm Rebecca, and this is Adrian. Why are those people leaving? They're scared of the spirit who dwells in this household. It's a terrible story, one fraught with tragedy. Would you like to hear it? Uh, no. I've got a terrible story to tell you. Want to hear it? The sweater layered character told Rebecca me pretty mu full and complete information about the mansion. The structure was originally commissioned in the 1800s, original owners of the mansion. Mio and Clara were a couple who'd recently married before moving to the new home. Mio first met Clara when she became his assistant. Oh, a magic act! Eventually led to them falling in love with each other. Miro the Magician, as he was called, was an illusionist. 
He was also remembered to have dabbled in two dubious things, adultery and the dark arts, though neither was ever proven publicly. You know, probably two things you don't want to get too steeped into. He was apparently successful enough as a magician to afford the mansion and continue performing with Clara for many years until... Because there's always an until with these stories. Until, for some reason, my mind kept wandering, but I did my best to stay focused to Terrell's cliched story. That was a really awful picture frame. So happened to the magician and his wife? They disappeared. Okay. Really? Magician disappeared? How ironic. Very cute. They completely vanished. Were they ever found? Eventually, Mira was found dead in the basement of this very mansion. His body was covered with long, deep slash marks, like he'd been scratched to pieces by some sort of long-fingered animal. But his wife was never found. I think Clara knew that her husband had been cheating on her. Maybe when she found out, she confronted him with it. Maybe Miro kept a book full of black magic that had something to do with it. But I think something very dark happened on the night they disappeared. Well, yeah, no shit, he died. Then they suddenly stopped the history lecture. Do you believe in ghosts? I never really thought of it seriously before, but no, I didn't believe in ghosts, sorry. It's fine, no need to apologize to me. And what about your beau? What does he think? <laughs> I'll give your girlfriend a tarot reading if you like, free of charge. Oh, that sounds interesting. I've never had a tarot card reading before. Let me guess, you predict in your fortune that someday we will die. Well, it's all up to interpretation, but... The Fool! Hey, that's me! This card represents the Fool. That's you. <laughs> That's me. The card in the center represents the person this is going to happen to. And the fool is usually a person who is both curious and lucky. Rebecca put her arm around mine and squeezed it. Well, I'm certainly lucky to have Adrian. Aw, isn't that sweet? Too bad she's not real. Just like all my girlfriends. The card below represents a person who will be involved. This represents determination and endurance. So, a determined person? Exactly. Someone who will keep going, even in the face of adversity. Well, that's not me. Me, I can't even get out of the bed in the morning, so I'm just like, fuck it. Comfort, it's too comfy. No. Card at the top represents another person involved. Specifically, a woman, since this is the Empress card. Would that be me? Am I the woman? Since this is a tarot card reading of you, I'd actually interpret that woman as Clara, the magician's wife. I'm sure her ghost is here. As long as you're in this house, you and her will be connected. Well, alright, pack your packs, we're going home. The leftmost card represents a past event. The tower is associated with sudden, disruptive, and potentially destructive change. It also means liberation and the gaining of freedom. Well, yeah, we just moved into this house, there's a bit of a change there. But in terms of destructive change happening in the past, I define it as Clara's past. And death! Well! Oh, death is often a misunderstood symbol. It doesn't necessarily mean a literal death, it can mean the death of an old way of life and the beginning of a new one. In other words, it could be as simple as adopting a dog? Or moving into a spooky mansion where there is apparently people who are murdered here? So, what now? Alright, we gotta unpack and then we explore. Why don't we leave the rest of the luggage till later? Alright, cool. Whatever. <laughs> Screw getting comfortable, let's look around. I can do it myself. You can spoil that house and I'll catch up with you later. Okay. Well, it's official. Trapped in a horror game. A badly written one. I'll just go and get the luggage, alright? Oh, this game has so much self-referential humor, I love it. Pulled out the two improbably sized suitcases. Call them that, because that's all we packed. There was no moving van. There's traveling light, and then there's this. Our whole previous life was the contents of these two suitcases. With a heave, I hifted them up to carry them back to the mansion. Whoa! Something sinister is out there. After about five years or so, I eventually finished my trek up the front path and made it back to the house. I'll go put the luggage upstairs. <gasps> a ghost! Uh, Rebecca! Help! Oh, they're gone. Oh, great, I'm going crazy now. I saw a ghost, it was a ghost of a woman, I think she was the magician's wife. Did you see it? Oh, Adrian, you probably just thought you saw something. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy! Well, this wasn't our bedroom. I actually stepped into the attic, dust cover toys filled the room. Toys? Did Clara and Miro have children? Cheryl didn't mention that. Or maybe this is actually going to be a children's room for you and your girlfriend. Oh, Rebecca's screaming. I found Rebecca on the ground. I rushed to her aid and helped her up. What happened? The there! Get out. Well, you know, if it says get out, I think we should probably get out. I run past you? Do you see what happened? I heard you scream, and I rushed over. No one passed me. How could you miss it? I saw it. I saw the ghost. 
They plan on doing a seance? Okay, yeah, that's great. I, I don't care. I just want to go home. Terrell says it'll be fun. Okay, I guess we're just going to forget the fact that all this is happening. What? But, but this is our home now. Fine, fine, fine. Not like, not like we gotta do anything sensible or, or you know, have any sense of self-preservation, right? Wait, what's this? Behind a section of ripped wallpaper and worn wooden wall paneling, there was a marble tile, and it clearly didn't belong there. Press on the tile, wall opened up. Holy shit! My goodness, you found a secret passageway. Really? You're surprised? In this house? Rebecca and I are gonna perform a seance in the vestibule. Would you care to join us? Why do you guys care so much about the seance? Never mind the secret passage I just fucking found. There won't be any way to give the ghost true peace unless we can find a way of communicating with her. I hope you change your mind, though. The more people, the more power. I'll be in the vestibule if you want to join in. <sighs> if I was in a horror game, at least I could choose how the story ends. Win the game or find a way out of the game. Problem was, I had no idea how to go about doing either. Where should I start? All right, let's go to the secret passageway. I walk down the dark, creepy stairs. I reach the basement, which turned out to be a cellar. Barrels filled with wine lined all over the room. At least, I think it was wine. But with how the rest of this mansion was designed, there's probably eight or seven barrels. Probably opened up to a secret passage. I looked around another and noticed. Oh, hey! Armor! Can I, can I wear it? Uh, anyone in there? Okay. <gasps> oh, it's glitching out! I was strangely drawn to it like a moth to a flame. The suit of armor was different from everything else in this world, like it didn't belong here, like me. I touched it and... <gasps> Do I get to turn into a knight? Because if so, that'd be awesome. Error, lost connection to host Adrian. Searching for new host. Host Hana found. Whoa, wait, what? Whoa, and then the game just crashes. Whoa, and now it's this. School life romance. What the hell? Now it's a totally different game. So now I'm a girl in a romance story. Hana, I guess. I'm Hana, and the largest problem I have is that I was born with pink hair. Well, sort of. Let me explain. Pink hair isn't exactly normal here, no matter what anime tells you. Oh my god, I'm in a Japanese visual novel. Holy shit, this is so cool. All right, cool. You two fall in love, or these are all the guys that you can date. It's one of those... What? What the fu- Oh, he's back! Excuse me, but where am I? Third floor of the South Wing. Uh, you're in Mitsuka High School. Oh, uh, what the fuck is going on? I got jumped into another game. This is kind of cool. Are you one of them? Eh? I, uh... What if we have the same question? Am I supposed to be the protagonist? Then yes, I do. Not to boast. In fact, I don't want any of it. I've been trying to ignore it my whole life. Holy shit. Holy shit! Hana, oh my god. I can read the name above the dialogue box. No, I can't read your inner thoughts, just like you probably can't read mine. Oh my god, what? That! That's it, that's what I'm looking for! I glance at the flyer. There's a photo of a suit of armor that'd be- Oh my god, the suit of armor is connected! That's the exact same suit of armor that brought me here! Look, I know this sounds crazy, but I'm pretty sure that armor can get us out of here. You sound like a crazy person. I know, I know, but please, help me. Oh. Oh, I just remember the festival's tonight. All right, that's great. That's great. All right, night time. Let's go and get ourselves out of this world. I'm not. I don't even care about the dialogue anymore. I want to see where this game takes me next. Rebecca, a real person? Oh, he was talking about stuff that he got from Rebecca and how he left it all behind. I I don't know. Do you love her? Yeah, yeah, I loved her. Why do you ask? It's just you referred to her in the past tense, like she was dead or you left her or something. I loved her, but now I don't know if she ever even existed. Can you love someone if they never existed? That's an existential question. This is pretty trippy. Oh, this guy's here. Oh, because it's one of those dating games, all the guys get super jealous anytime the girl gets talked to. What the fuck? What the fuck? Suddenly he pulled out a switchblade knife. Just who are you? Holy shit, this dude's crazy. I... Oh, the ghost. I... I can't. I won't give up. The ghost of the girl was behind him! Nobody's gonna take you away from me! I'll kill them before that ever happens! You're out of your mind! Where was everyone? Then I saw it. Inside the shrine, I saw the suit of armor. I darted up the stairs and Adrian quickly followed. Oh shit! Gotta get to that suit of armor! Cable's close behind. Hana, wait! Please, I love you! <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. This is, this is, this is weird. Come on, we're almost there! Reach the top. Just had to make it to the shrine. 
in just in the nick of time. We touch a suit of armor and Antique Paladin has joined your party. What? What? What you? F <laughs> We're in an RPG now. A ghost attacks, and it's Clara. All right, all right. Go ahead and use magic. I don't have enough mana. Oh, all right. Um, attack. Miss. Oh. Oh my God! Antique Paladin. No! It's Adrian's turn. What's a special attack? I don't have enough stamina. Defend. Ah! It didn't help. Oh God! You don't have anything either. All right, you go for it. And, well, it's a ghost. You're not going to hit it. Rip in pieces. All party members are dead. Game over. What the fu- And then the game just crashed again. All right, one more time. I'm going to boot it up one more time and see what happens now. Whoa! It's definitely taking us back to the original. A tarot card would be the inter- Oh, oh, the, inter the tarot cards. Death. That was in the future. Rebecca, what's wrong, Adrian? What's wrong? Please say so. Oh, God. Oh, no. Hello, Adrian. I'm so glad you're back. Why not sit down? Relax. Stay. I've been so lonely since my husband died. Uh, look, we, maybe we can talk this out. Please, think about it. What good will killing me do? Don't worry. You won't really be dead. You'll just be, well, unable to leave. Well, as long as you got a good internet connection and a lot of good games, I don't think I would mind. I want that very much, Adrian. Why me? Because you're not like the others here. Your mind is complex. It's not made up the same ones that Zero's and the Rebecca's is. So you're staying here, Adrian. You're staying here forever. Even if it means that I have to use force. Tell me, Adrian. Do you know how difficult it is to crash a game? I'll tell you. No effort whatsoever. Oh! <laughs> Hidden file found in the log. Can you read this? It's me, Simon. Do you remember me? We don't know what, how you're going to receive this message or in what form. Go to the game folder. Open the file for Adrian.rpy. Open it in Notepad or whatever you can use. You'll find further instructions in there. Holy shit! This game really goes down the rabbit hole. All right, hang on, hang on. I got, I got, I got the folder open here. Uh, for Adrian.rpy. I gotta look around and find it. Holy shit! This is actually really cool. Adrian, this is a bypass for Clara.exe. It's telling me what to do. All right, it says, we. I set up the small crack, but I need you to set it up from wherever you are. I've tried to make the code as simple as I could for you. We just need you to set up the following switch from false to true. Label hacker setup stop Clara equals false. I gotta change it to true. Make sure you get the uppercases right. You have to use true because the lowercase true is not enough. Hopefully that'll add a new button for you. Be careful, Adrian. Claire's been able to jump between games, but hopefully she won't be able to detect this tiny, tiny file. Hopefully she's not standing behind you. Don't look. Don't take your eyes off this page, off the safe glow of the monitor, the comforting shapes making the sentence, this is safe. What's behind you isn't. You mean the sound foam? All right. All right. Okay. If I save it like that, running away, are we? N no. Shit. How am I supposed to get out? What if I say yes? Oh, it crashed. It crashed. Now I gotta boot it up one last time. All right, and then she corners me and I should have a new option now. There it is, bypass! I got you! <laughs> what are you doing? Stop it! No, no, no! Oh my God, what's happening? I'm back in the mansion, but now, now I'm just feeling so sleepy. Oh my God. They're waking up. Oh, I was I was in the Matrix the whole time. I found myself in a sterile white room. Sitting in a strange, expensive-looking chair with wires attached to me. Hana was sitting next to me with a chair closer to a wall. Several people in white lab coats standing over us looking relieved. Where were we? Who were these people? Redacted Life was a company that was trying out a new form of virtual reality gaming. By using this new technology, people could plug their consciousness directly into a game of their choice. The program then made the player forget their real life, replacing it with a fictional game protagonist's backstory until they finished the game or their timed gaming session ran out. I'd volunteered to beta test with this virtual reality program and so had Hana. Unfortunately, something went wrong with the machine. Oh my god, that is so clever! Simon had Hana and me on what happened. Instead of kicking the two of us off the server after a lot of time, we stared where we were. Stayed asleep for several hours, trapped. During those hours, Simon and his colleagues had been frantically trying to pull our minds out of the program, but had been unable to due to how temperamental the machine was. 
Anything too drastic could have been risky for our own safety. It might have even resulted in Hana and me permanently losing our minds altogether. But that wasn't even the worst part. On top of all that, one of the characters, Clara, had seemed to develop her own AI and become hostile, trying to crash the system and kill us by bringing the games to an end state. Whether we lost or won, the game didn't matter. Either would have ended in the games crashing and us dying. Luckily, Simon was able to inject a mod into the program in the hope that it would have woken up Hana and me. He called it Paladin.exe. What the fuck? I left the building. I had enough checkups and tests. Hana and I were just fine. We walked the front steps to see the sun was setting. It was hard for me to describe how that one particular sunset looked to me. Uh, have I learned anything? It's better to live a real normal life than an exotic fake one. Now we all have to come to a point where we have to decide whether to stay in our delusions or move forward. And I guess for once we go into the unknown of reality, you have to do your best to not listen to that little disembodied voice telling you that you can't leave. That's very wise, Adrian. We're not that normal though, are we? I mean, what is normal? We might not have the most exotic lives, but they're nice lives, right? Then why would we want to live a fake one for a while? Wow, this is actually some pretty meta commentary here. I guess you don't know how good your life is until you have something else to compare it with, huh? Whoa! That blew my mind. Wow, that was crazy. Very rarely do I see games break the fourth wall and do it in a way that is successful and makes sense, but this game really impressed me. That was clever and that was cool. But the whole thing about accepting reality, I sort of like that bit at the end because, well, I remember being a teenager, maybe some of you guys out there watching who are in your younger years might be able to relate to this, but a lot of times we just don't really want to accept the way our lives are as the current reality. We want to like get away from it. We want to escape. We always, I feel like it's a large reason a lot of people come to YouTube is because they want to escape the rest of their lives to come to this section of the world and the internet where everything is okay if even just for a second but i think this game just goes to show that we can choose to define whatever realities we wish to have in our lives it might not be easy and it might even take a long time for you to ever define your own reality that you want to live for but it's what everyone has to get around to doing it's part of the process of getting older and growing up wow this game really impressed me i really wasn't expecting much from it but i am humbled very graciously by this game's writing all right anyways you guys that was redacted life if you guys liked this video as much as i enjoyed playing this game bop that like button and i will see you next time